All right, fuckers, welcome back to the uh, fucking hell. <laughs> welcome back to episode 32, season three. Are we in season three? Yeah, season three of the Football Manager 2017 Old Firm Revival. Now we're at the end of January, and as, we, as we've decided to do with the series now, we're just doing it in six month periods, just so we're going to take. Um, breaks at the start and at the midway half of each season we'll just check on how the teams are going so obviously this season Celtic were the defending champions Aberdeen finished second last year Rangers for Hearts fourth and they were the four teams representing us in Europe but before we check how teams are getting on in Europe let's check what's happening in the Scottish Premier League and now there you can see Celtic as you would expect currently leading the league again uh, 24 games played 52 points, they have a 10 point advantage over Rangers in second place. But maybe more importantly for Rangers, they're leading Aberdeen by 5 points. Now this time, this time around, two teams are going to be in the Champions League next year for Scotland. So finishing second is a lot more crucial than it has been in the first two seasons. So if Rangers have ever picked a time to finally get the best of Aberdeen, then they've picked a good one because Champions League is uh, what it's all about. We've got Paddock Thistle in fourth and Johnson fifth. Hibernian 6th and you can see Hearts in 7th and they may be struggling with the European football. Um, in terms of the league here, Moussa Dembele and Scott Sinclair 13 goals each, that's fucking top notch, that's great. Well, I think that's all competitions actually, it might not just be the league but still very good. Got Scott Sinclair, highest average. Scott Sinclair, most player of the match awards. And Scott Brown is always picking up the most yellows and most reds. But he also has the most pass completion, so at least he's doing something right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, Scottish Cup, we've got a fourth round replay against Cowden Beef. Bet Fred Cup, we uh, were knocked into semi-finals by Rangers. And in the Rangers won that, by the way, so Rangers did get their first trophy of this uh, whole series by winning the Betfred Cup, but we'll check that out when we go into the Rangers page. And then the Champions League, let's see how Celtic got on. Disappointing, actually. Um, did not qualify. And you see, we're actually in Group A again, another tough group. Um, Napoli, Monaco, Tottenham, it was tough. We were always going to struggle, and we ended up coming dead last. We didn't even drop into Europa League football, which was uh, disappointing, obviously, but, you know, it is what it is really so and to get to the Champions League we uh, defeated Falgarenga 6-1 on aggregate in the second qualifying leg we then went on to face FH from Iceland we beat them 9-0 on aggregate to take us into the playoffs And then the playoffs, as it will show me. We beat Happy Ali Bayer Shiva from Israel. So, um, yeah, pretty comfortable to get into the Champions League. But once we got there, we got shafted by a tough group, really. And we couldn't do much. So, it is what it is. In terms of signings, we haven't made any more signings. Just the original four players that we purchased at the start of the season. And, um, obviously, you know, Robles has left. Cal McGregor's left, and we've loaned a few more players out since then, including Tony Gallagher and Scott Allen. Also, Liam Henderson. So, um, like I say, you've got a massive squad with Celtic, and you can't get everybody game time, so you're going to have to, sooner or later, give the um, some of the other players a chance and ship them off. Anyway, let's see how we're doing with Rangers. But before we check Rangers, we will check how we are doing in the European competition now. Remember, three teams were in the Europa League from Scotland, so good. We're rep been represented good, man. A trio of teams. And I am trying to fucking find it. <laughs> um. Where are we? Where are we? We're almost there. Almost there. We're almost there. Almost there. So yeah, in the first qualifying leg, 
I think two of our teams entered from this stage, or maybe all three did. Rangers won, went to the next round with a 5 0 convincing aggregate win over uh, Genesu Eek from Luxembourg. Hard to pronounce these names, but not hard to beat them, that's for sure. Jamie Walker and uh, got the goals, and uh, followed by Nick Wilson, Sutter, Sam, and Hearts winning 9 1 in aggregate over a team for San Marino. Another easy win for Scotland. And. What the fuck, where's Aberdeen? They mustn't have come in till the next round. So let me move on to uh, round two. And Aberdeen, you can see, went through with a lovely 7 0 aggregate win over this team, Strinsky or something, Bosnia. So another good win. We also had Hearts defeating KGHM Sabif with Poland. 4 0 in aggregate. I mean, you could argue that we got pretty favourable draws here, but I mean, you still have to beat the team in front of you, and we did that. And then Rangers with a nice 6 1 aggregate win over U U Pest or something, Hungary, so that was all good. And then this is when things turned it slightly sour. Where the fuck are we? Um, <laughs> right, third qualifying round leg. So yeah, Aberdeen have a nice win. Oh, it wasn't this round. Aberdeen again with a nice 4 1 win to advance. It'd be FK Austrian win. I actually know that team. That was a good win for Aberdeen. Don't think they'd have been favourites to go through in that match. Um, with Hearts, another 4 1 aggregate win over some team for Serbia. And then with Rangers, we have 3 0 aggregate win over CMS Poli Lazi Fate Romania. We may then moved into the playoff stages. And you can see Hearts there with a lovely 7 4 aggregate win over Srumguske. Um, even though they lost the second leg, they did enough to win the first leg 4 0, so they come to win it through. Aberdeen, got Malmo, decent team. Malmo have knocked the uh, Celtic Rangers out of European competitions in the last decade, but Aberdeen got the 3 1 aggregate win. So it looked like we're going to have a Queen sweep for Scottish teams in Europe. And then. This happened. Where the fuck's Rangers? Where the fuck's Rangers? Yeah, like, so. Rangers won the first leg at Ibrox 2 1. AC had out, and got a penalty. Nine minutes from time in the second leg. It went, finished 2 2 in aggregate, but with the away goal, AC had out, qualified. So, it was disappointing. But Celtic were in the Champions League. Hearts and Aberdeen were in the Europa League group stages. So, I mean, apart from Rangers, though, it was still. It was uh, very good indeed, you know, so. And how we got on in those group stages. Just benefit Scottish football in the future. See, Aberdeen topped their group, topped the group with Sofia and Spartak Prague. I mean, fucking very good from them. The one loss came away to Sofia, but they won every other game. Look at that. Amazing. Even a 1 0 win at home at Pataudry over Sofia. Who's won it, who won it three years in a row not so long ago? So amazing from them. But you can see Hearts finished fourth in their group. They did have a tough group though West Ham, Gungamp, and Lazio. So, it's not the end of the world, but after three games, I think Hearts were on four points. They lost their last three, which was disappointing, but it is what it is. But Aberdeen, they will advance to the next round, and I think they will take on... Is it Sparta Prague they got? Or is it Club Bruges? Who the fuck did they get? can't remember, but I think it's a winnable tie from what I remember. Even though I can't really remember. Spartak Moscow, so I mean, a good chance for Aberdeen to go through there. Hopefully they can do it, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And as for Rangers, like I said, they're still second in the league and knocked out the Euro Cup in the playoffs by AC Dalkma in the fifth round of the Scottish Cup against Hamilton, but they won the Betfred Cup, so that was amazing for them. Let's have a run. Let's see the run to the final. Um, so the second round when they entered. Hold on. <laughs> Second round, they got Falker, took them 2 1, took them extra time to win 2 1, so probably more trickier than you would have liked it to be. Quarter final, they came with a, another, another extra time win over Dunfermline, so ah, Hearts lost 5 0, it's a shocking result for Hearts. But yeah, but anyway, they uh, got a nice 1 0 win. And then in the semi-final, a lovely 1-0 one -one over Celtic. And uh, finally, probably the best bragging and right the Rangers have got. I think normally in this series, it's been Celtic knocking Rangers out of the competition. So finally, it's, it's nice to see Rangers get the upper hand for once. 
then Aberdeen obviously they won their semi-final and it meant it was going to be Aberdeen taking on Rangers in the final of the Betfred Cup and Rangers came out 2-0 winners and the goals in this game came from Martin Faghorn and James Tavernier so Rangers think they edged possession more no I didn't edge possession but Aberdeen edged possession but Rangers did more shots and shit like that so I think I don't know, it was a good game, like, but I think Rangers probably deserved it. In terms of transfers, I don't think we've added anybody. Nah, so just, uh, I bought these three guys and I was recommended this dude from, I don't know, was it Barry Ferguson or somebody, so we decided to go ahead and bring him in. So it is what it is, 1.4 million spent. Kind of hard to catch Celtic win there in the Champions League and getting Champions League money and winning the league every year. So they obviously get more money than us. But obviously if we finish second this time around, we will be in the Champions League. And then maybe in a few seasons time we'll be up there challenging with Celtic. We'll get more money coming in. We'll be able to bring in better players. So I'm hoping that's the way it's going to go and we'll see just how good we can make Rangers and Celtic. But for episode 32 guys, that's going to do us things. See 24 games played, 14 games remaining. I uh, can't see anything but Celtic winning the league here, but I think the most interesting battle is for that second place. Rangers currently have a five point lead, but you all know that could change very quickly. But it's not just Aberdeen they have to worry from. Look at that, probably first one the same points, and you've got St Johnston just one point behind, and even Hibbs a further two points behind. So could be very close as we come down to the wire, guys. So uh, let me know down below who do you think is going to finish where? How do you think Aberdeen will do remaining in the Europa League? Who's going to go on to win the Scottish Cup? And, uh, yeah, just let me know your predictions. And if there's anybody you'd like both of these teams to sign in the summer, let me know down below and we can try and make that happen, guys. But anyway, until next time, Beans of Scotland 90. This is the old firm revival. Peace.